Doreen. All right, All right. seven o'clock, so I will call the meeting to order. Good evening, everybody. Today is December 6, 2021, and this is City of Tiger Planning Commission uh, public meeting. And may we have a roll call, please, Dory? Yes. President Hu? Here. Vice President Jackson? Present. Alternate Commissioner Dick? Commissioner Brooke? Here. Alternate Commissioner Miranda? Present. Commissioner Quinones? Present. Commissioner Roberts? Here. Commissioner Shook? Here. Commissioner K7? Commissioner Watson? Here. Commissioner Whitehurst? Here. That's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think Commissioner K7 is here. Yes, I'm here. Sorry, oh, okay. my audio was giving me trouble. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doreen. Uh, commissioners, uh, do you have any communication you wish to report since our last meeting? I see none, so let's move on to the consideration of minutes. Uh, Doreen uh, sent us an updated version today, and uh, if you have any additions, deletion, or correction you wish to report, please raise your hand. I see none, so I declare the, min the minutes approved as it's submitted. Thank you so much, Doreen, for getting getting it to us so quickly. Um, it was a two-hour meeting, so it was a very fast turnaround time. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the main event of tonight. It, I, I'm going to open the public meeting on Tiger Transportation System Plan update. Um, is Comprehensive Plan and Development Code Amendment. It's case number CPA 2021-6 and DCA 2021-4. And the city is proposing, um, sorry, the city is proposing to update the transportation element of the comprehensive plan. The update will include a new uh, 2040 Tiger Transportation System Plan, and the city is also proposing to amend the development code to implement needed amendments identified in the Tiger 72nd Avenue corridor study. So before I start the hearing, I have some required statement that I need to read. A, the applicable approval criteria on, are those listed on page one of the staff report Available at the rare, um, available at the City of Tiger website and the public hearing. B. Testimony and evidence must be directed toward the applicable approval criteria listed on page one of the staff report or other criteria in the comprehensive plan or land use regulation they are believed to apply to the decision. And C. Failure to raise an issue accompanied by statement or evidence sufficient to afford the decision maker and the parties and opportunity to respond to the issue precludes appeal to the land use board of appeal based on that issue. And here are some procedure items. Commissioners, if you wish to declare a conflict interest, please raise your hand. I see none. And if the, any, anyone in the audience wish to challenge any member of the planning commission for bias or conflict of interest, Please stay so when you call in. And by the way, the call number for the public testimony is 
4101. Again, if you wish to call in for public testimony, the number is 503-966-4101. Next item is ex parte contacts. Commissioners, if you wish to report any ex parte contact or communication, that is oral or written communication about a hearing with persons other than city staff or the city attorney, please raise your hand. I see none. Um, since this is a citywide uh, plan amendment, um, I, I, I don't believe any commissioner have visited every side of the proposal, but if you believe you are, please raise your hand. I see none. Again, um, if anybody in the audience wish to challenge the jurisdiction of the commission, um, please call in and raise your concern. Okay, I would like to give a brief, de brief description of how the hearing will proceed. First, the staff will give their staff report, then the applicant will make their presentation. And since in this case, the applicant is also the city, so they may or may not have an applicant to make their presentation. After that, we will take public testimony. So right now, I would like to introduce staff member, which is Senior Transportation, Transportation Planner Dave Roth to um, present the staff report. Good evening, Dave. Hello, Commissioner Hu and uh, Tigard Planning Commissioners, as well as uh, Tigard City staff. So my name is Dave Roth, and I am uh, Tigard Senior Transportation Planner. Um, I'm here tonight to um, present on uh, my staff report for the 2040 Transportation System Plan update, as well as provide a presentation uh, to you um, to give you a summary of the, the new 2040 uh, proposed 2040 TSP. So this is my, I, I've come before you uh, previously to provide briefings, but this is my first um, public hearing in front of um, the Tigard Planning Commission. So I'll rely on um, Tom McGuire and uh, Commissioner Hu to help guide me if I uh, stray here. Um, so um, tonight, um, you, you've been provided with the, the staff report um, regarding um, the proposal to adopt the transportation, the proposed transportation system plan 2040, um, as well as the, uh, the technical appendix as ancillary documents to the comprehensive plan. And then we've also got a comprehensive uh, plan amendment for chapter 12 um for revising chapter 12 which you have in the staff report and then also a proposal for the development code amendments as commissioner who mentioned regarding um the tiger triangle uh section within um the development code um so our recommendation uh to you is to uh approve uh, to recommend approval of the uh 2040 transportation system plan um, as an ancillary document to the comp plan and also to recommend approval of the uh, proposed comprehensive plan amendment to chapter 12 and the development code amendment um, all to Tigard City Council and our tentative um, hearing date in front of City Council is um, January 11th uh, 22 so um, if, if it's okay, um, shall I move on to my presentation, uh, Tom? Yes, okay. please do. Great, Great. so um, before I get started, I just wanna um, also acknowledge that I have with me uh, our project manager on the consultant team, uh, Kendra Breland from Fair and Peers. And then I also have Matt Hasty with Angelo Planning uh, along as well. Um, Kendra and I will be uh, providing the presentation tonight, and then um, all three of us will be available uh, to help answer any questions that might come up. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Uh, give me one moment. OK. 
Okay. Okay, here we go. Can everyone see that all right? Yes. Excellent. Um, so tonight, the purpose of the public hearing is to review the proposed update to the transportation system plan, um, to review proposed amendments, and to consider any public testimony that we've received either in writing or that you'll hear tonight at the meeting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you a uh, review of the proposed TSP 2040 um, to summarize uh, key elements of the update. So uh, the transportation system plan, as I mentioned, is an ancillary document to Tigard's comprehensive plan. So the comprehensive plan includes a chapter specific uh, on transportation, that's chapter 12. And the transportation system plan, um, of which we, we currently have, uh, the TSP um, 2030 um, is our, um, or sorry, 2035 is our currently adopted transportation plan. Um, the proposal is, is to update that to the uh, future horizon year of 2040. That's why we're calling it the TSP 2040. And it will be an ancillary document to the comprehensive plan. So the 2040 TSP, similar to our currently adopted TSP, serves as a blueprint for transportation investments for the community. It serves as a coordination tool with regional agencies and local jurisdictions. It's an important component of prudent and effective land use choices, uh, making sure that we're uh, thoughtful about our transportation and that land use decisions and making sure that they're coordinated. And it's also a compilation of existing and future transportation needs to all of the different modes of travel represented within the community. So we're talking about walking, bicycling, transit, automobiles, freight, and new and emerging technologies of which we're seeing quite a few right now. One of the key pieces of the new um, TSP and, and one of the uh, pieces of work that we conducted early on uh, in the project was uh, setting new uh, vision and goals. So the new vision uh, represented in the 2040 TSP is uh, Tigard's transportation system advances our strategic vision to be an equitable community that is walkable, that is accessible, walkable, and healthy for everyone. And then we have six goals uh, on topics such as safety and comfort, uh, environmental considerations, quality of life considerations, um, livable neighborhoods, supporting economic vibrancy, and then also uh, transportation uh, funding and expenditures. So it's worth noting that these are the overarching goals. And then um, underneath each of these goals that you, you saw within the plan itself is a set of policies. Um, right now, in the comprehensive plan in chapter 12, the uh, goals and policies um, are represented in uh, chapter 12. And um, what we've proposed here is that the, the goals uh, kind of lead um, the discussion within chapter 12, but then the, the policies themselves are housed within the TSP uh, to eliminate any uh, duplicative uh, language. Um, key themes. But before I jump into the key themes, I, I wanted to mention to you um, really quickly about our, our current TSP. Um, it was initially adopted in 2010 uh, after a, about a two-year planning process. And uh, since then, it's been amended four times. And I just wanted to share with you what those amendments uh, look like. Um, after the initial plan adoption of our current TSP. So the first one was to incorporate the neighborhood, or the, sorry, the, the Greenways master plan work into the TSP. The, and that was in 2011. The second amendment was 2012, and that incorporated uh, the downtown circulation plan. The, the next or third amendment was in 2014, and that was to incorporate uh, River Terrace transportation plan. 
And then finally, in 2017, uh, the TSP was amended to incorporate the Tiger Triangle. So um, that's just to reiterate that this is a, a living document. Um, at the point of adoption, you're capturing um, what you know at the time, uh, but you acknowledge that um, amendments may occur in the future um, as needed. So getting back to the presentation here, so key themes, let's jump right in. So the first key theme here is uh, completing our streets to serve everyone. And this was uh, really a foundational uh, objective of the plan and was born out of work that the city of Tigard completed back in 2019 uh, when Tigard adopted the complete streets policy that uh, discusses how we can better um, make investments in our transportation system that serve everybody. Um, and really that's that's supporting Tigard's longstanding goals around walkability uh, in our community. So we recognize and this plan recognizes that our streets play host to more than just cars. Um, we can complete our streets by completing the walking and bicycling network, um, by reviewing uh, posted speeds within Tigard and looking for outliers where we might have a speed posted that doesn't make a lot of sense in um, an urbanizing community. And then also making the most of um, our existing um, arterial network where we have two to three lane uh, cross section roads where uh, five lane expansions within our uh, city uh, would drastically increase costs and impact neighborhoods and um, conditions for active transportation. Um, so this is represented if you if you took a close look at the plan in the new modal plans for uh, walking and bicycling, which is a, a significant component of this update. Uh, the second key theme I have here is around um, breaking down connectivity barriers uh, with uh, Highway 217 in Tiger. I think everybody understands that we have a number of um, limited access freeways and highways, as well as uh, rail uh, corridors within Tiger that create real uh, boundaries or barriers within our community that are difficult to get across. Um, so one of the themes in here was uh, a proposal for a new um, crossing, ped bike crossing at Southwest 95th. And then another one in the Tiger Triangle uh, that was consistent with the work, the planning work that we did with the Southwest Corridor uh, rail, a uh, light rail project. I'll just mention while I'm here on this slide um, that I, I think you heard recently from Susan Shanks on the Washington Square Regional Center. It's worth pointing out that um, the TSP update coordinated very closely with that project. Um, and one of the, the really nice things about having these projects occur at the same time um, was that we were able to take uh, the learnings and findings from the Washington Square Regional Center and bring them into the TSP uh, process. Um, when you're doing a TSP, your, resor your resources don't always allow you to get to um, a really fine grained level of detail in any, any one single area um, because you are looking at a citywide plan. But because these projects were uh, occurring simultaneously, we we're able to take some of those learnings from Washington Square Regional Center and apply them here. Um, finally, um, we're thinking about um, uh, vehicle connectivity into the Tiger Triangle, and you'll see um, a couple of projects represented in the proposed project list that address that, particularly around um, the Highway 217 and Southwest 72nd interchange area. Next up is a theme around continuing investments in our trail system. So the plan proposes moving forward with key projects, some of which are already underway, and that includes closing gaps uh, and improving roadway crossings on Fano Creek Trail. I think if you've ever walked or uh, bicycled or rollerbladed on the Fano Creek Trail, you'll know that some of the um, larger road crossings are challenging uh, to get across today. So this plan proposes addressing those. 
Um, we also uh, propose the design and construction of the Red Rock Creek Trail. So um, if, if you don't know, Tigard was awarded grant funding about a year and a half or two years ago to do a trail alignment plan for the Red Rock Creek Trail within the Tiger Triangle. And this plan supports the design and construction um, of that trail uh, in, in the next uh, few years here with the um, constrained project list. And then finally, uh, one of the things that's uh, really important here is making sure that our existing trails are built to a standard that supports the type of use that we're seeing and that we anticipate seeing in the future. So um, we're talking about making investments to uh, repair surfaces that have degraded or you know are subject to tree heaving or um, seasonal flooding as well as making sure that the trails are wide enough to support um, people comfortably passing each other on them. The next theme here is uh, around highlighting bottleneck issues and thinking about roadway alignment opportunities. So where do we see traffic um, queuing? Um, what are some of the more complicated, complex intersections that um, could see improvements? And so we're thinking systematically uh, with this plan about improving circulation by advancing needed transportation studies uh, to identify right size solutions uh, at locations such as North Dakota, Tiedemann, and Greenberg, uh, as well as Scoffins and Hunsaker. And um, there are uh, several other areas identified within the plan as well, but these are some highlights. We're also um, thinking about partnering on regional mobility solutions. So um, many larger scale transportation projects uh, require close coordination with other agencies. So we're thinking about Washington County, uh, the Oregon Department of Transportation and or TriMet. And we're thinking about areas such as Upper Boots Ferry, 72nd and Durham Road. We're thinking about the Highway 99 uh, corridor. There's a project recommendation in the, the proposed plan that was born out of the T2020 Regional Transportation Investment Package that calls for a new uh, land use and transportation corridor study on 99. A critical first step in seeing improvements and investments made on the corridor. Um, we're looking at Bull Mountain corridor safety upgrades and then we're also thinking about partnering uh, to improve transit access, speed, and reliability um, by addressing bottlenecks in the this transit system today. So these projects require, require regional coordination but Tiger can be a leader in carrying these efforts forward. So I'm going to hand it over to Kendra, who will um, pick up on the next uh, few slides. Slides. And um, uh, so Kendra, okay. you're ready to go. Yep. Thank you, Dave. Um, so I'm going to touch on our public involvement process for the TSP. So despite a global pandemic, um, we managed to connect with over 2,000 community members between January 2020 and August of this year. So our public involvement efforts involved a variety of methods to gather input from the community. Some of the uh, methods are, are listed here, involvement and hours of effort by our community advisory committee, which actually see some of the members here tonight um, as a part of, I believe, the Planning Commission. Um, uh, print and digital media promotion to get broader public input. Um, we also reinforce that by placing yard signs around the city and sending out a citywide mailer inviting people to participate um, in a major TSP survey. Um, and we also, of course, connected with the community um, through formal settings such as tonight's hearing. So we can go to the next slide, Dave. Um, so what did we ask people and, and kind of what did we hear? Um, and it looks like there's a little bit of lag. There we are. Um, so first of all, Dave shared kind of the transportation vision and goals. Um, that's something early on. Not only did we establish um, that vision and goals by working with city staff and with our community advisory committee and our technical advisory committee, but we also uh, pulled the community in terms of how they supported the goals. And as you can see from the slide here, we had a relatively high level of support for each of the TSP goals. Um, so go to the next slide. Um, we also asked the community specifically about specific investments that they'd like to see. Um, 
and some of those investments, here they are, um, just in terms of what people would like to see improvements on, um, highest level of respondents were um, wanting to see more investment into um, facilities that would support walking and biking, um, and that was followed by um, uh, community members desiring improvements um, to help with automobility. So you can see that um, active transportation has been um, a big theme, not just something that's led by city staff, but something that the community by and large is interested in seeing more investment in. So if you can go to the next slide, Dave. Um, so we dug into the types of active transportation um, projects that people would like to see, where they'd like to see them. Um, this was a question that asked people about where they'd like to see more sidewalk improvements. And as you can see, near schools and in high priority safety locations uh, were the top rated respondents. Um, so if you go to the next slide, we also asked about where people would like to see bicycle network improvements. Um, and um, the top respondents were um, in areas to address safety hotspots and also to provide safer crossings, uh, particularly where bike facilities are crossing arterials. So we can go to the next slide. Um, oops, there we are. Um, we, we also talked about the transit system. Um, so while the city of Tigard, of course, does not own or operate um, transit facilities in the city, um, transit facilities are a really important part of our transportation system. And there are a number of ways that the city can be a great partner in making sure that Tigard residents have access to strong transit systems. So when we ask the community, how might the city invest um, to make their transit experience better? Um, people were really interested in seeing um, improvements that would lead to higher speed and reliability along key quarters. So that the way to think about that is how can the city help the bus to be on time, maybe through managing its transport, its street transportation system to make sure that um, buses aren't getting caught in congestion. Um, so if we go to the next slide, I'm gonna get into kind of some of the key elements of the TSP. Um, so underlying kind of the overall philosophy of this TSP um, is the concept of a layered network. So how do we think about each of our travel modes and how we can accommodate them throughout Tiger's transportation system? So the TSP um, includes a modal network, a modal plan for each of the modes here on the screen. So again, pedestrians, bicycles, uh, uh, motor vehicles, transit and freight. Um, what you would see on the screen here um, is a picture of the transit modal plan. And really what these modal plans did was help us think about, well, what are those components of the transportation system that are most critical for serving each mode? Um, and for on those kind of components of the transportation system, um, we kind of um, developed policies, policy guidance for how those modes should be served and how they can be accommodated. So from the perspective of head and bike, since that was such a high interest, thinking about what types, um, what, what quality of sidewalk environment do we need to see? Um, from the perspective of bicycles, um, what, um, what, what level of accommodation, how um, comfortable do those facilities need to be to really accommodate um, our users? And so these modal plans and policies really helped us to establish project needs, which helped us ultimately to develop a project list. And on the next slide, um, Dave will show kind of a, a summary of um, the overall kind of uh, financially constrained project list. So again, these are the improvements that we would anticipate being able to fund um, over the next 20 years as a part of this TSP. Um, so I just want to talk quickly about what each of these categories are. Um, so first of all, just getting oriented to the graphic that you're seeing here, um, we broke the project list into kind of six buckets. Um, so those are kind of categories of projects. And as you can see, each of these six, pro each of these six buckets um, includes a variety of projects. So the first category there, stronger streets networks, um, these are improvements um, focused on providing um, higher capacity on our street system. So that could be improved intersection function. In some cases, it could be um, an additional turn lane or a roundabout. 
Um, so we've got 32 projects on the project list that really kind of help with that kind of vehicular mobility. The next category and by, by, by far the largest is our urban upgrades and active transportation category. So we've got another 32 projects there, but 166 million in capital improvements. And these include projects like standalone pet and bike projects. So new sidewalks, um, new maybe bicycle facilities, but it also includes complete streets improvements to some of our existing roads to make sure that they're not just accommodating cars, but they're accommodating other modes as well. Um, the next category that we've got are connectivity improvements. So we've got five category, five projects in this category, and these are new street connections to help people have shorter distances between different destinations within Tigard. Um, the next category is transportation system management. Um, and operations, so kind of a mouthful of an acronym there, um, but these are improvements to really make our system function better. So it might be signal upgrades, um, maybe retiming uh, corridors such that um, our, our transportation system is able to accommodate people more efficiently. So we've got a couple projects there. Um, we also have category of transit supportive infrastructure. So we've got three projects there. And then last but not least, um, our special study areas. There are a few areas within the city um, where we really identified that we need to spend some more time looking at those areas, thinking about the dynamic nature of development in the area, regional traffic, um, and thinking about how we can really um, continue to plan those areas to make sure that we're developing infrastructure recommendations that are really optimal for Tiger. So all told, we've got $312 million in projects, and that's spread over about 80 projects citywide. You can go to the last slide that I have, Dave, and I'm going to turn it back over to you um, just to show, you know, those were that's a lot of millions of dollars. And I think the one thing that we really want to stress is that almost a third of our project list is low cost projects um, that are fairly easy to implement for the city. Um, when you start thinking about those really high capital improvement projects, so this um, five to $10 million projects, that really is um, a minority of the project list. Um, so just showing kind of that cost spread. And with that, Dave, I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Great, thanks so much, Kendra. Um, so um, I'm gonna move us on to a slide here about implementation activities. So you heard a bit about the key themes of the plan. You also heard our, uh, about our project types, our public involvement that we did on the project. And now I'm gonna share some of the additional implementation activities that this uh, plan recommends. So um, these are activities that might not be captured within the um, project or program list, but they are, um, there are elements within the plan that, that suggest uh, moving forward on these, these areas uh, within the city. So um, the first one here is around vehicle and transportation system electrification. This is a, a hugely important topic, um, you know, for the entire state uh, and, and as well as for Tigard. Um, we will um, move forward with this implementation activity starting next year. We've got a grant from the state to develop uh, an electric mobility strategy for this, the city. And that will go a long ways to meeting our community resiliency and greenhouse gas reduction uh, goals. Uh, the next item here is around transportation sector uh, greenhouse gas reduction uh, strategies themselves. So um, we have a memo included uh, within the technical appendix that provides some recommendations for um, how we might reduce the impacts of, of our transportation sector on uh, climate change. So um, we know that the, the transportation sector is responsible for about 40% of overall GHG emissions. So it's a it's kind of ripe for um, targeting for reductions. The next one here is something I mentioned earlier, and that's um, looking at uh, posted speed zones, uh, posted speed zone reductions on several roadways. And um, since there is a, a process that we have to go through with ODOT, um, to to reduce uh, speeds, we're proposing a package of these uh, to do at once um, to bring to, to ODOT to make a decision on. Um, next one here is around uh, 
future methodology updates to our transportation SDC methodology. And really these are in line to support um, cities affordable housing objectives to make sure that we're able to um, provide uh, affordable housing opportunities in uh, different uh, shapes, forms, and sizes. Uh, next one here is a handful of future Tiger Development Code updates, and I think we have another slide that goes into more detail there. So um, we have um, in front of you tonight uh, one set of amendments to the Tiger Development Code uh, for the Tiger Triangle, but we have a list of recommendations uh, for additional ones that we would take on at a, a future date. Uh, next item here is around micro mobility transportation options. So, how might we um, uh, advance uh, initiatives around uh, shared uh, bikes in Tigard, uh, maybe even considering shared scooters uh, in, in the future, as well as um, you know using those tools for first and last mile uh, transit support um, within the community. And then finally, we have an item here around curbside management and parking. So um, this is sort of a new, newish topic around uh, managing the curb. And it's it's something that we uh, do in downtown Tigard. And we do have a, a, a very small residential uh, parking program um, within the city. Um, but there are opportunities as the city continues to grow and become more dense in certain areas like the Tiger Triangle, Washington Square Regional Center, or downtown. How, how might we better uh, manage the curb um, and, and parking in those areas? So um, moving on, I, I have a slide here on the proposed amendments before the Planning Commission tonight. So um, in addition to the 2040 TSP, we have uh, amendment proposed amendments to Chapter 12 of the Comp Plan and then uh, section 18.660 of the development code. And these are uh, provided to you within the staff report in much more uh, detail. But uh, in summary, the chapter 12, again, is the transportation chapter within the comp plan. Um, it, we're proposing new and updated language uh, for the chapter, um, updated overarching goals reflecting what's documented within the proposed TSP 2040. And then uh, references rather than lists detailed policies so that we don't have a lot of uh, duplicitous language in, in two places. And then finally, updated findings. Um, the next proposed amendment is for the Tiger Development Code. Again, minor updates to 18.660. Um, the first of which is to uh, codify the concept plan for the Southwest 72nd Avenue corridor within the Tiger Triangle. This is a project that we took on, um, took about a, a year or so to finalize, but um, it recommends or it, it would codify a new uh, roadway cross section and right of way requirements for Southwest 72nd um, within the Tiger Triangle. And this would be a fully multimodal road with protected. Uh, bike lanes and um, new sidewalks throughout the whole corridor. Um, and then in addition to the, the 72nd Avenue uh, uh, cross sections, there are very minor changes to bike parking requirements, uh, access uh, above ground utilities and screening. And, and you can see those in your in the staff report. And then this slide uh, captures some of the potential future amendments, uh, and I mentioned this earlier, to the Tiger Development Code that are recommended within the uh, new TSP 2040. So um, updating our, our cross sections within the Tiger Development Code to better reflect the, the new complete streets multimodal uh, concepts described in the plan changes to off-street parking standards, and we may have some, um, some new requirements coming down from uh, the state uh, around off-street parking requirements that we'll have to fulfill uh, regardless. Um, bicycle parking or uh, mobility hubs at transit facilities, uh, noticing to transportation agencies, uh, traffic impact analysis refinements, so when a new development is proposed, um, how they fulfill 
uh, a, a transportation a study um, as part of their project. Um, significant effects to state facilities, uh, so ODOT roadways, um, vehicle electrification, so thinking about charging stations and how you might incorporate charging um, infrastructure into new developments. And then finally, as I mentioned before, mobility hubs at transit stations. So finally, we get to the staff recommendation and uh, decision alternatives uh, before you tonight. So uh, the staff recommendation is to uh, is for the Tigard Planning Commission to recommend approval to City Council to adopt the 2040 TSP and appendix as an ancillary document to the comprehensive plan. Uh, second is to recommend approval to City Council of the proposed comp plan amendment. And finally is to recommend approval to City Council of the proposed development code amendment. Um, your, your decision alternatives tonight are number one, to recommend approval to council with no changes. Number two, recommend approval to council with minor changes. Or number three, continue the hearing to a date certain to consider public comments for major changes. Um, and then just quickly, a next step uh, slide here. So um, we're here for the, the public hearing in front of the, the Planning Commission um, tonight on December 6th. City Council is tentatively scheduled for January 11th, uh, 20, uh, 2022. Um, and, uh, and then 2022 and beyond would be plan implementation. So with that, I'll close out my uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Kendra. Um, commissioners, do we have any questions for Dave or Kendra? Please raise your hand. Commissioner Jackson, please go ahead. Hello, Dave. Um, I had two questions about the proposed uh, code amendment um, changes. Uh, the first, I'm looking at page 13, the very last page of the um, proposed code amendments um, and the very last couple of lines actually. Um, we're, we're proposing removing the, the five-year um, approval window on uh, uh, required improvements related to paying a fee in lieu. And I was just curious if there was a specific motivation behind that or just a general feeling that that wasn't reasonable. You're muted, Dave. Sorry about that. Hi, Commissioner Jackson. I believe that the rationale for that is that um, in some cases, um, these improvements um, take longer than anticipated. And so it allows a little bit more flexibility in the future um, for, for essentially getting the capital work completed. Is there much is there much percentage of projects that are approved and funded that don't ever get built? Or is that pretty rare? Um, I, it's, it's not something that I typically oversee or am, am too involved in. It's something that, that our engineering department is more involved in. So I can't give you an exact percentage. I, I just know that the, the, um, requested change here just allows a little bit more flexibility, um, for the team. Okay. Thanks. And my other question is on page eight out of 13. Um, I may actually have sent this to you in my notes already, but um, I was a little, the way I was reading uh, the requirements under B.4 and B.5, part of my brain kept telling me there's a, a, a conflict there because it sounds like if I'm designing a street that has dedicated on street parking and has a required right turn lane, 
that right turn lane is going to be in that parking lane, but I'm also required to have curb extensions, which seems like it's, it seems like those two things couldn't be happening at the same time. Am I reading that wrong? Um, give me one moment to just read this again. Sure. Um, yeah, thank you. So you would not have a curb extension where you had a, a right turn lane. It, it should be written as such to accommodate um, the right turn lane within um, like the, the parking lane space on the roadway. So I, it should be, um, let's see. I mean, the way I read it, you could maybe argue that except where they would interfere with bus movements would would preclude that because you can't. Right, exactly. You you can't have, uh, and there are some cases where you would have a, a bus uh, stop on the near side where you wouldn't be able, or actually on the far side as well, where you wouldn't be able to have a, a curb extension. So the idea here is to, to require curb extensions where you can, unless you would have a conflicting um, right turn movement or a, a bus uh, pull out, that's right. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioners, any more questions for Dave? Dave, I have a quick question about, um, in your document, I believe it's in TSB, and also as well as in uh, the chair of um, TTAC's uh, email comment, when, when both uh, describe, um, Bike, bike and pedestrian pathways, um, the desired goal is to make them comfortable and stress-free, but the word safe is missing from the one of the desired qualities. Is, is there a, a, is that by design or? That's, that's a great question, Commissioner Hu. Um, occasionally there is some sensitivity around um, using an adjective using safe as an adjective to describe transportation facilities. So um, you, you do have to be careful um, to not open yourself up to liability by saying one thing is safe and something else is unsafe. Um, so that's that's probably the rationale there. Um, I think the safety goal is embodied within the, the overall goals um, and objectives of the plan. Um, and, and I think that's where you would find that representation. So any any transportation facility that we're designing or building, um, it must be safe, uh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I yeah. I, I assume so. And I'm just curious why, when it comes to pedestrian and and bicycles, it only says stress free and comfortable. But but that makes sense. That safe is already assumed and it's encompassing everything. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we have a so do we have a city staff for for as for applicant presentation or are you are you doing both, Dave? That's me. I'm doing both. Yeah. Okay. All right. So okay. Great. So um, thank you for now. And if I, if commissioner have more questions, we'll, we'll open this up again. Um, so, so before I go to the uh, public testimony, I believe we have a guest from the TTAC, George, who want to make a um, statement. So, so George, please Hello. go ahead. All right. Uh, good evening. Um, can everybody hear me? I hope. Yes. Oh, um, my name is George Brandt, member of the Tiger Transportation Advisory Committee. I've lived in Tigard for about nine years now, and my wife was raised in Tigard, 
and I have served on the TTAC since about 2017. Um, as a member of TTAC, I have also served uh, on the Transportation System Plan Update Project <laughs> Community Advisory Committee. Uh, I am here tonight to support the adoption of the 2040 TSP and related amendments to the city's comprehensive plan and development code. In my time serving the city of Tigard, pedestrian and bicycle safety has been my primary interest. I am especially concerned uh, with pedestrian infrastructure around Tigard schools. Um, the 2040 TSB increases focus on creating livable neighborhoods that are designed to improve multimodal connections while discouraging unsafe interaction. The 2040 TSB also recognizes the importance of working on filling in Tigard sidewalks and bicycle infrastructure to create high comfort and low stress bicycle and pedestrian facilities. For these reasons, I support the adoption of the 2040 TSP and related amendments to the city's comprehensive plan and development code. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you, George. Um, thank you for your service. Um, commissioner, commissioners, do we do you have any question for George? I see none. So thank you, George, again. Um, Let's move on to the public testimony. Kilan, do we have any callers? There is one caller. All right, so, so speaker will be time and limit to three minutes. Your time will begin after you clearly state your name and address, and please spell your last name. And uh, so, good evening caller. Uh, good evening, uh, Commission. This is Ezra Hammer with Taylor Morrison. My last name is Hammer. That's H-A-M-M-E-R. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. And your address? Fantastic. My address is 703 um, Broadway Street, Suite 710, Vancouver, Washington. Thank you. Please go ahead. So I just want to Thanks, staff, for bringing this material before you today. I'd like to um, address an item that's included in a memorandum dated November 1, which was prepared by the consultants here and peers. Um, uh, and I believe you have all received that memorandum. We are uh, currently building out River Terrace, um, have been for quite some time, and plan to build out South River Terrace as well. As part of that work, we are the first builders to bring middle housing to the city of Tiger, and that's uh, really the integration of duplexes and triplexes within um, single family communities and really integrated in a way that is um, seamless uh, and pleasant to the uh, community as a whole. We're very proud of this work and thankful for all the support that the city uh, through its elected leaders and staff have given us in these efforts, and we believe that we're really crafting something that will be of value to the community for decades to come. Um, what, we, uh, what we hope for, and, and perhaps have to provide some clarity on that process tonight, is really the opportunity to explore the SDC fee structures that currently exist. As highlighted in the memorandum that I referenced, um, the consultants explain that the city of Tigard uh, really lacks nuance with regards to how STCs are charged to dwelling units. There's really essentially uh, two buckets uh, of fees, one that relate to single family dwellings and one that relate to all other types of dwellings. And, and as we move forward with middle housing and the uh, building of non-traditional housing types, we think it's absolutely important for the city to recognize these uh, differentiated housing units and account for them differently in the existing SDC structure. Um, for anyone who's built housing, uh, they'll know that, unfortunately, the, um, uh, the, the, the costs of housing uh, go up uh, fairly uh, precipitously the smaller the units get um, and if they're attached. And in order to account for this and to ensure that the development community is properly uh, supportive in their efforts to provide middle housing, we really encourage the city to re-examine the fee structure and craft a system of SDCs that um, differentiate 
based on housing type, recognize the increased costs associated with providing attached housing uh, and the uh, increased costs associated with providing middle housing. If, if middle housing is in fact something that the city would like to see uh, more of in the future, um, will certainly be best served by a system development charge fee structure that accounts for these differentiated housing types. So uh, again, want to thank staff for all this work to date and uh, would, would love if uh, they might be able to provide a little bit of clarity with regards to the SDC fee structure uh, that is accompanying all of this work. Thank you uh, for your time this evening and I will uh, sign off. Uh, before you go, commissioners, do we have any questions for the caller? I see none, so thank you so much for calling in. Um, Kieran informed me that we have a second caller, so caller, you're on. Welcome. Yes, good evening, commissioners. Um, I'm Ruth Harshfield. I'm chair of the Tiger Transportation Advisory Committee. I'm also a long-term resident of Tigard, moving here in 1989. Um, my past career, I'm retired now, my career included many years working statewide to promote traffic transportation safety. As a member of TTAC, I also served on the Transportation System Plan Update Project. Can you hear me? Yes, Ruth, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Update uh, the Community Advisory Committee. I found this process to be very positive. I'm here tonight to share my support for the adoption of the 2040 TSP and the related amendments to the city's comprehensive plan and development code. Through the CAC meetings, I found that many of the key findings identified complemented the opinions of TTAC members. We often discuss the fact that although motor vehicle travel continues to be a primary mode of travel, creating better opportunities for alternative modes is essential. We want to see improved connectivity in the existing system and a change to land use patterns to shorten home to work trips, support transit, and make walking and biking more viable which also will help to reduce congestion. We're concerned with the potential negative impacts to neighborhoods and active travel modes of widening roadways to improve traffic flow. There needs to be a balance. High comfort and low stress bicycle and pedestrian facilities are seen as vital while transit service is viewed as an alternative to private automobile travel. We're very aware that funding is limited and transportation improvements require strategic investment to maximize the value for all people who use the transportation system. The goals of the 2040 TSP also resonate with TTAC, including supporting environmental and community health by reducing our carbon footprint, minimizing impacts to natural resources, and addressing unequal health impacts and outcomes of our transportation system. Also improving quality of life by promoting providing access to jobs, schools, and essential services with convenient, affordable travel options, creating livable neighborhoods that are designed to improve multimodal connections while discouraging unsafe interactions, supporting economic vibrancy by accommodating the movement of people and goods, and creating equitable opportunities for economic development. And finally, making the most of transportation resources by leveraging funding opportunities, not overbuilding our system, and making investments that reduce ongoing system maintenance and preservation costs. Dave Roth and the staff and consultant team that worked on this plan have developed a new strategic vision for Tigard's future, emphasizing developing a multimodal transportation system that is safe, walkable, healthy, and accessible for everyone. As a long-range planning tool for Tigard, it will ensure our transportation system can meet community needs. For these reasons, I support the adoption of the 2040 TSP and the related amendments to the city's comprehensive plan and development code. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, before you go, commissioners, do we have any questions for our guest? Mm, I see none. So thank you, Ruth, for calling in and thank you for your service on the TTAC. All right. 
Kilan, do we have any more callers? There are no other callers. Thank you. All right, commissioners. Um, so Dave, um, would you like to respond to the to the first caller? Um, yeah, so the first caller was George Brandt. So I'd, I'd um, just a like to thank, thank him for his service, uh, both on uh, TTAC and on the Community Advisory Committee for the project. Um, I appreciate his comments. Um, and, uh, you know, he emphasized um, sidewalk infill and pedestrian safety as, as key um, priorities of the TSP. Um, and so I, yeah, I just want to say I appreciate his comments. Thank you. Oh, I'm I'm talking about the the person calling about the fee. Oh, oh Ezra. Yeah, it's Ezra. Right. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. So, uh, first caller, second commenter. Um, <laughs> he, so Ezra um, asked a question about the um, the tiering um, for SDCs, and um, I'm looking at the memo right now. So uh, essentially. A couple of things that I would call out, and then I, I'm also going to ask Kendra to uh, chime in here as well, since we have her and she helped develop the memo. Um, the memo that we've uh, provided for the TSP 2040 um, is one more step closer, or it, it supports us getting one more step closer to um, implementing some of the recommendations for our, our transportation system, uh, transportation system development charges uh, for the city. And so our, our memo here is largely consistent with some of the recommendations that also came out of the, the Tigard affordable housing um, strategy itself. So we, we now have some consistent recommendations coming from multiple planning processes, pointing us in the right direction to support different and more affordable housing types within Tigard. Um, the, our specific recommendations, and I'm, again, I'm gonna ask Kendra to, to support me here, um, identify um, the the lack of uh, different tiers uh, for um, uh, housing types within Tigard currently and propose a, a tier approach for housing based on square footage or size of housing. Um, both Portland and Clackamas County have adopted uh, programs that recognize the lesser impacts of smaller housing types. And um, the specific recommendations of our of our memo here are um, suggest following a similar approach that Clackamas County um, took, which applies different rates based on square footage and housing types. So uh, single family apartments, uh, townhomes and condos. And um, Kendra, if you have anything additional you'd like to add, it'd, it'd be great to hear um, from you. you. No, I think, oops, can you? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, good. I was concerned my team's window just disappeared on me. No, we had a really robust discussion, I think, just to share with um, kind of the planning commission on SDCs. Um, I think, you know, there's, so first of all, Tiger developed its first ever SDC program back in 2015. And I have to say that there's a lot of good stuff there. So, you know, it's not to say that our memo is overly negative about your SDC program. I think it's doing a really good job in helping you to deliver transportation projects um, that you need to support new development. Um, but what Mr. Hammer noted, um, and I think we agreed with at the staff level, is that there are a lot of improvements that could be made, not only to, to you know, help, um, help um, kind of more tailor the program um, to support housing goals, um, to help tailor the program to um, better support your uh, multimodal transportation delivery goals. Um, so we've seen a lot of good examples out there um, throughout the region of other SDC programs that are funding multimodal project lists. Um, and also just thinking about potentially how fees uh, might be varied in different areas of the city to be more responsive to the impacts of specific developments. So, um, I, you know, what I would say is that SDC programs really should work hand in glove with your S with your TSP. Um, and so now that you're updating your TSP, this is a really great opportunity to update your SDC program just to make sure that it's really optimized optimized um, to deliver your um, 
TSP program, um, but also fit within the realities of developing within Tigard. So I don't know if there was there was more specifics you wanted me to hit on, Dave. I could probably talk all night to this group, but I want to be respectful um, of uh, folks' evenings as well. No, that's great. Thank you so much, Kendra. Thank you, Kendra. Commissioners, do you have any more questions for Dave or Kendra? Uh, Commissioner Jackson, please go ahead. So only if no one else has any questions. I was I was a little curious on, uh, I'm looking at page 57 of the TSP now. Um, I was curious, The it lists that 61% um, of residents in poverty have access to transit. And I was just curious if that's typical or atypical compared to other jurisdictions and like what the the causality behind that might be. So I'll, I'll step in and again, Kendra, if you have anything to add here, I'd appreciate it as well. But um, I think the the factor that, uh, at least in Tiger, that sort of determines that percentage is really related to um, our land use patterns and, and zoning within the city. I think if you look at the the existing and, and future transit maps we've included in, in, the, um, in the plan, you'll see that we have large islands of um, single family homes and, and neighborhoods that don't have um, good fixed route transit um, to them. And um, so much of our transit is is um, within some of the, the larger corridors, or roadway corridors of the city. And I think so um, I, I can't speak to whether or not that's similar to other, you know, medium sized cities. Um, but I don't know, Kendra, do you have anything to add? there in comparison there's there's really no rule of thumb you know i think you know the rule of thumb is that we should all be doing better um these are you know the category of users that would benefit most from having more mobility options to help them access services to help them access jobs all of those great things um and these of course are the people that you know they don't have as much access to vehicles they don't you know they don't using Uber or Lyft or, you know, some of those options that may be available to many um, can be cost prohibitive. So I think just given Tigard's strategic vision, um, our focus has really been that the, these are the group um, of, you know, users that we we most want to prioritize um, optimizing whatever we can do as a, as a city to, you know, help bring more services to help lift people up. I think that's that's their strong interest. Um, I, I think if you were to look along, around the per Portland region, I think it's going to vary greatly. Um, certainly in our, you know, kind of more um, inner city areas, as you get more into kind of Portland metro area, yes, those people have more access to transit. Um, and I think, you know, there, of course, there are going to be areas that are much worse off than Tigard. So I think we just need to kind of look within ourselves and, and think about how we can improve their access. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, any more questions? Um, I see none. So, okay. So, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Kendra. We'll go into our deliberation. Commissioners, i would be interested in your thoughts. Commissioner Roberts. Well, I, I'm in favor and uh, I hesitated because I don't always want to be the first person to talk. Um, but but yeah, I'm in favor at this point. Thank you. No Commissioner Whitehurst, go ahead. I see you took over your mic. Hey, yeah. Hey, thank you, Commissioner Roberts, for being the first. And well, I as well am in favor. Um, I thought the thoughtfulness, the reaching out to community to hear what our community wants and needs are, uh, to me that that was really, really uh, valuable. Um, and thank you. Thank you as staff uh, for your thoughtfulness. Thank you. Commissioner K-7. 
Hey, uh, I echo um, uh, the previous comment. I think um, it's, it was really wonderful to hear the thoroughness with which this whole project has been approached uh, with, with a very open mind and uh, with a lot of uh, care uh, given towards uh, the, 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 the community, et cetera. It's, it's wonderful. So very happy to see it and uh, very good to see it. Now, of course, I forgot to ask the question that I asked Susan uh, is that uh, we have this whole um, uh, um, budget that uh, the federal government uh, passed with the trillion dollar in infrastructure budget. If there is some way, or shape or form, if Taggart can be first in line for that, uh, that can help this one and some of the other improvements. That would be great. And you guys know better than me how to go about that one. Yeah, Dave, if you want to answer, go ahead. Hey, that's that's a fantastic question. And uh, it's something on my mind uh, a lot right now. In fact, I probably spent a third of my day um, in discussions with uh, people on that exact topic. So um, I guess speaking in terms of the TSP itself, the TSP is really uh, a critical document in setting our city's transportation strategies and um, including a project list with some aspirational projects. You know, Kendra hit on that um, breakdown of the different project costs. And when you get to the higher end of those project costs, those are the types of projects that we rely on on federal or state uh, dollars to support. And so we have to have some of those in our plan. Um, and so now is the time to get be getting this plan adopted <laughs> so that we're ready to go after some of these these new dollars that are flowing right now. So this is something that's that's happening coinciding with this this uh, planning process itself. but we're we're thinking a lot about how to um, you know get in, in the front of the line for some of those those new capital dollars. So great question and thank you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner. Uh, Watson and Kinone serve on the Community Advisory Committee, so thank you for your service. So, Commissioner Watson, you have any pitch you want to make? Um, I just want to say, of course, I'm supportive, and um, you know, I, I had the privilege of participating in a in a number of um, CACs and and um, you know, watched the process. Of um, how everything to gain, came together and, and had input, and um, you know, saw the community having their, their um, making their input and and having an impact as well. So um, great job, everybody! Thank you so much, and um, yeah, uh, definitely um, pro pro TSB approval. Thank you, Commissioner Quinones. Do you have any? Thing to add? Yeah, um, I want to thank Dave. Uh, he was so wonderful and patient through this whole year with all of us. Uh, I know it was like herding cats sometimes, um, but overall, the goal has been, um, you know, 200% just uh, improving and really taking to heart. Um, all of the uh, vision of Tigard and making it, keeping it walkable um, and looking at how do we become a more inclusive community as a whole. So um, yes, great job, everybody. Thank you. I'm in support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you again for serving on the community advisory committee. And I, I'm looking at the TSP and I think your last name might be misspelled in the in the community advisory committee section, but <laughs> it's spelled Kinona, but anyway. <laughs> it's probably from my email because it's Q U I. Yeah, it, it's okay. okay. It's, it's, <laughs> they will fix. They will fix it. So, <laughs> uh, so Commissioner Brook and Shook, do you want to take any? Want to express your thoughts? Go ahead. Uh, Broken shook. Um, I really don't have anything else to add. I think all my comments were, or all my thoughts have already been uh, expressed by the others. So I'll just uh, support it. And when you first mentioned a misspelling, I thought you were saying they misspelled TSP. So I was wondering how that got misspelled. <laughs> 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 oh, it's fine. 
Commissioner Brooke, any very last comment before you leave the commission? <laughs> no, I, I just think the presentation was wonderful and I'm just excited about it. Excellent. And I'm excited too, and I really appreciate the staff, especially for the 2000 people outreach effort. That's very really impressive. And I agree with 90, 91% of the respondents that we need to work on more on the walk, uh, um, walk and bike path in our city. So, but I, I'm 100% in support of this effort. So thank you staff for, for your work on this. So, um, so it's, do, do we have any motions? So Dave or, or Tom, do, do we prefer three motions or can we just do everything in one motion? Um, let's do three, sorry. Three, just okay. Just make sure we do it. <laughs> we don't miss something. Okay, so, so, the, so commissioners, does that mean we have to do them in a specific sequence? No, I don't okay. think so. So we could do the Maybe TSP some. update, then the CPA, and then the development code amendment. That sounds like a good order, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. I'll I'm one way to bring this to, to, to get a to get to a close on this. So I move that the planning commission forward a recommendation of approval to the city council for the Tiger Transportation System Plan update, the TSP 2040, um, and adoption of the findings and conditions of approval contained in the staff report and based on the testimony received. <laughs> do we need? <laughs> I mean, was that? Do we need a case number, Tom? There, uh, there was, yeah, you probably probably should include the case number. You don't need to say conditions of approval. It's legislative, so there's no conditions of approval. Okay, okay I, I saw like I saw a case number for the CPA and a case number DCA, but I didn't see a case okay. number side. That's fine. Okay. The TSP is a little bit of an oddball, so it doesn't necessarily. That, that's why I was asking if there's if we needed a sequence because you know, I have to use the underlying You're, cases before doing the TSP. It's fine. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. Looking for a second. <laughs> okay, so Commissioner Robert have forward a motion. Um, in um, CPA 2021-6. Um, um, that the Planning Commission recommend approval of the 2040 Transportation System Plan as an ancillary document to the Comprehensive Plan. Do we have a second? I second. Commissioner Kinone, second. All right. Yes. So, commissioners, please take a few minute, minute, moments to find the hand button. All right, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, please aye. leave your hands on, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine hands, so the motion passed unanimously. Thank you. So please lower your hand. All right, so now we get to the CPA and the DCA himself. <laughs> Anybody else want to take a shot? I will, I will note that uh, uh, Alternate Commissioner Miranda has asked if there could be a discussion on the code amendments. Oh yeah, definitely, sorry. Separate code discussion, I'm sorry, separate discussion on, specifically on the code amendments. Commissioner Miranda, what would you like to discuss? Um, yes, thank you. Um, uh, I, I didn't speak up about the TSP. I think it's great. I just feel like there should be just a little bit more clarification for me and for the public what specifically these code amendments um, change. I know we have had a lot of input 
um, from the community is um, recognized. And I've dug a little deeper on, on the 72nd Avenue survey responses from 2019, but I haven't been able to find um, uh, stakeholder information about, um, you know, what um, the business the business community said about um, the changes to 72nd and just wanted to kind of get the pulse of what that was um, before we agreed to these changes. Obviously, pedestrian and bike safety and um, bus service is exciting, but I also um, saw that the biggest concern was about patchwork and I'm not I'm not clear that the code amendments make that happen it just makes it say this is what happens in an ideal world world so I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about that or if any other commissioners were curious <laughs> thanks thank you Dave yeah, that's a great uh, question, Commissioner Miranda. So I'll try to fill in as much as I can on that detail. So a, a little bit of context is probably helpful. So with our, our currently adopted TSP, the, the TSP 2035, um, one of the projects within that um, plan um, uh, recommended developing a, a corridor plan or concept plan for 72nd Avenue to determine the, the future cross section. So um, I'll start with the patchwork. Uh, well, just a little more context on, on the project we did. So um, we, we spent about a year with a consultant team um, doing uh, community outreach and development on that concept plan. So there was extensive outreach conducted within um, uh, the triangle to businesses and, and residents to um, determine you know, interest the needs for the corridor to develop the concept plan. Um, we uh, we had on staff a consultant team that was made up of Alta Planning and Design and DKS, who did the traffic analysis uh, for the corridor. And we worked through a number of different potential concepts, basically from Highway 99 all the way down to 72nd Avenue. And um, the the problem that we have today without having um, a, a consistent cross section on the books is development is occurring and development is being required right now to build to a cross section that was sort of undefined and that's one of the reasons where you're seeing this patchwork of the road is wide and then narrow and then wide and and you see some pieces that are uh, left un finished, uh, like where there's parking um, or the, the future bike facility as, so as development is, is coming in. Um, and, and the concept plan, which was led by our engineering group, um, came up with a, a solid, consistent plan from 99 to 72nd Avenue um, that included uh, facility designs for all modes. and. The, the, if I can recall um, the, the cross section, the cross sections are in front of you in the, the development code section there um, between um, Red Rock Creek and uh, Dartmouth was, is essentially one section and it narrows down to um, mitigate for the, the natural area around Red Rock Creek. And then it, it widens out and we have a three lane cross section um, going down to um, a little pat past Dartmouth, and then one of the the cross sections uh, south of that until you get to Hampton, I believe, is uh, what we're calling a it's it's a five lane cross section with which provides on street parking to support the new commercial development uh, within the corridor. Um, but it's, it uses a facility type that they call Pro Tem parking. So during um, peak traffic hours. You actually have two lanes of, of travel open for vehicles uh, during peak hour and then off peak hours those outside lanes can be used as parking sort of an innovative concept to to be able to meet the needs of, of travelers but then also the commercial needs for parking um, on street um, i don't have the concept plan in front of me right now or the the concept report but it did go through an extensive public engagement process and a lot of staff deliberation to come up with this 
um, the concept that you see in front of you today. Um, I don't know if Tom, if you have anything that you uh, would like to add on that. No, I think you covered that pretty well. The one thing you I think that was confusing is you said it went from 99 to 72nd Avenue, but. Oh, sorry, to 217, <laughs> yeah. 217, yeah. I think probably most people thought, but I wanted to make sure we got that clear. Yeah. yeah, so this is, this is Dave said, this is follow on work to the Triangle project. And uh, well, several things came together uh, and we were finally able to get that study done that's been needed on 72nd for a long time because of the, the problem with the inconsistent standards, so. On the chat, uh, Matt said he would like he can help explain some some certain aspect of it. So, Dave, would you like Matt to speak to some of this? Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I didn't recognize Matt. Matt was also uh, leading the project. He was doing facilitation for us. Um, Matt, that would be great if you could um, share some insights. Thank you. And I won't add too much because Dave, you did a good job of covering it but I was the consultant team project manager. Um, I'm not a transportation planner, so Dave's right that Alta and DKS did a lot of the technical work on that, but I was the person that coordinated it for the consulting team. The only thing I would add is that um, I would just echo what Dave said about the amount of community engagement we had during that process. We had quite a bit throughout the process. In the, in the sort of first part of the process, we had a combination of kind of general community engagement, community-wide engagement, um, via, you know, bang the table, via community meeting, um, et cetera. And then we also did a series of stakeholder interviews with folks from, you asked about the business community. So yes, the business community, um, freight community, um, but as well as residents, members of TTAC. Um, so we did that and we kind of kept all of those folks on an e email interested parties list. And every time we had kind of a milestone or a, a checkpoint, we circled back to them and said, hey, do you have any additional comments? What do you think of what, about what we've done so far? So we continued to touch base with those folks, um, including when we came up with the design that's that David described and that these code amendments essentially codify, as he said. Um, and as Dave said, the design does vary kind of through the corridor that, and it reflects um, can, it, sort of differing conditions in terms of available right away, but also in terms of sort of the function of different parts of the corridor. So we took that proposed design out through another community meeting through, um, again, um, bang the table, um, the city's website, and circled back to those other stakeholders via email and really had pretty good support, I would say, you know, for that proposed set of solutions. The section where we ended up proposing the flex lane or the, um, I can't remember what, how, how Dave referred to it, but basically where you have on-street parking some of the day and when you need it, capacity for traffic, that was a big um, sort of breakthrough, I think, in the process. And actually, I think your former city engineer, Laurie Faya, suggested that. Um, so that's all I would add to that discussion. And then just the code amendments are meant to primarily codify the new design, but then there are a number of other sort of detailed pieces in the code amendments around things like access, um, bicycle parking, things like that, that are kind of at the more detailed level. There are amendments to the existing code provisions, and they're just meant to make sure that we're addressing some of the other things that are important about transportation within the area, not just um, the design um, it, itself of 72nd Avenue. So. Those are the things I would add, and um, those sort of then for, went through further staff review after we finished our work. Um, and so there's some additional amendments in there that um, happened during the last year or so, just on the, the code amendments outside of the cross sections. So hopefully that's probably more than you wanted to hear. Hopefully it's not less than you wanted to hear, um, but it, I can answer other questions if you have them, but that's what I would add. No, I definitely appreciate um, uh, understanding that um, our economic drivers were um, considered in the conversation and that were they were on board. Thank you for your information. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.
Any thoughts, Commissioner Miranda, or? Any thoughts? Um, I'm I am definitely uh, interested in just to seeing how those things play out um, once they are in the code and if um, those standards affect our development speed. Um, just yes, I'm for it, but I'm, it will be interesting to watch. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Thank you for the question on the business uh, from the business side. I wish I thought of that last week. But <laughs> anyway, all right. So if there are no other questions, we can continue with our motion process. Commissioner Roberts. <laughs> OK, um, so the last one was for the TSP 2040. This time uh, I'm going to go first for the CPA and then for the DCA. So I am moving that the Planning Commission forward a recommendation of approval to City Council for the application of the Comprehensive Plan Amendment, case number CPA 2021-00006. Thank and, you. Oh, okay. uh, well, with uh, an adoption of the findings and conditions of approval contained in the staff report and based on the testimony received. I think there's no condition, but it's, it's okay. fine. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Strike so, so Commissioner Robert moved forward motion for, for uh, a recommendation of approval to the City Council of application CPA 2021-6 uh, and adoption of findings containing the staff report based on the testimony received. Do we have a second? K7. I second K7. All right. Commissioner K7 second. So Commissioner, please please take a moment to locate the raise your hand button if you want to uh, vote for the motion. Please cl please click on the hand if you wish to vote for the motion. Those in favor say aye. 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 I see nine hands, so the motion passed unanimously. Thank you. All right, please lower your hand again. All right, last one. For the win. <laughs> I move the Planning Commission forward a recommendation of approval to the City Council for the application of the Development Code Amendment DCA 2021-00004 and adoption of the findings contained in the staff report. All right, commissioners. Commissioner Robert move the commission, tiny commission for recommendation of approval to the city council of application DCA 2021-4 and adoption of finding contained the staff report and based on the testimony received. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I got what you said. All right. Do we have a second? I'll second. This is Commissioner Watson. Commissioner Watson, second. Thank you, Commissioner. Please take a please take a few seconds to locate the raise hand button if you wish to support the motion. Commissioner Whitehurst. There we go. <laughs> Those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Again, I see nine hands, so it's nine to zero, pass unanimously. All right. So all three motion passed. Thank this you. Is exciting. Woohoo. Exciting. Yeah. So as they mentioned, the City Council is tentatively scheduled to hear this on January 11th. For the latest update, please check the City of Tiger website. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Thank you, uh, Planning Commissioners. 
And um, I just want to say a really quick thanks to, um, again, to Commissioner Watson, and Commissioner Quinones for um, sitting in on the Community Advisory Committee, and then just quickly recognizing the project staff from the consultant side that we had here. I see Derek Abe, uh, Kendra Brayland, and uh, Matt Hasty. So big thanks to the, those those folks on the project, and I really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we are moving on to the next item on the agenda, out of business. So um, I just want to quickly, um, I guess, uh, remind this planning commissioners that I got a reminder from the city council that we are supposed to only vote yes or no on the motions. And we're not supposed to abstain unless we have actual conflict of interest. Enforce, and Tom has agreed to be the enforcer of that rule in the future. So <laughs> if you abstain from voting for a reason other than conflict of interest, you will hear from Tom. He will be the, he will be the bad cop. So the bad cop, yes. All right. Any other business, Tom? Uh, yes, uh, thanks for that reminder, but um, uh, yes, we have other business. Uh, we have two of our commissioners. Uh, this is their last night. Believe it or not, this is the last planning commission meeting of 2021. Uh, it's been, I wanted to thank all of you, number one, for uh, putting in some extra time uh, in November and uh, uh, hanging with us for this busy time. I told you when we were sort of canceling meetings and things were a bit slow that there would be some times when we would be adding and we we're just going through that. We'll, we'll have three meetings in January as well. But uh, I really wanted to thank uh, Melanie Brook, <clears throat> and Cole Whitehurst for their time on the commission. Um, both of you have been great commissioners. You've been uh, well prepared and uh, great, um, providing great input to the commission and great thoughts on the deliberations and uh, we're going to miss you. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, wish you well in your uh, future endeavors. Thanks. Cole and I started at the same time. That's right, you did. Yeah. Wow. So Tom, is the is the pizza supposed to be door dashed or? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we couldn't we couldn't pull that one off. <laughs> Somebody will have to take up the flag for parking spaces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't have anything serious, uh, super serious. So I, I think the commissioners, you might want to all want to all um, uh, join us with your uh, faces, if you'd like, for the end of the meeting. But yeah, thank you, um, outgoing commissioners. And I would also uh, take this moment to announce our new incoming commissioners for January. Uh, Commissioner Roberts has been appointed to a second four-year term. Congratulations. Yay. Thank you. Uh, George Brandt, who is actually on the call tonight and testified, uh, before us tonight is going to join the Planning Commission and step down from the TTAC uh, this January. And then uh, Commissioner Whitehurst was kind of a late um, uh, uh, in leaving the Commission in the process. So we have asked uh, alternate Commissioner Miranda to step up and fill his the end of his term. She has agreed to do that. So she starting January, she will be a, a voting member and uh, filling in Commissioner Whitehurst's remainder of his term. So thank her for that. And uh, yeah, looking forward to next year. Not meeting together. <laughs> As we spoke last week. <clears throat> Yeah, I really, again, I really appreciate everybody's time and your patience. And uh, this is a great commission. All of you really uh, put a lot of effort into being prepared and uh, taking this this work very seriously. So, and um, we definitely appreciate it. 
been interesting and educational and I, kind of fun sometimes. So thank you. We're going to miss you guys. Yeah, yeah. we're going to miss you, Melanie and uh, hers. Thank you. It was fun. Yeah. And congratulations, Commissioner Miranda. Oh, yeah, thank congratulations. You. And to our outgoing uh, commissioners, may your um, uh, your heavy reading be more um, less less planning talk topical. <laughs> that that appendix, woo, that's deep. <laughs> yes. Any words of wisdom from those departing? Uh. I don't know, Commissioner Jackson, you got all the wisdom, so he's still there, so you guys are good to go. I certainly hope that's not true. Well, it's been really humbling, and I even think Commissioner Jackson uh, just showing up so well prepared when we were in person. I noticed you had your personal like notebook um, journal almost, you know, with notes, and uh, so for me it's been extremely humbling, and a lot of the questions um that i may have been hesitant asking i so appreciate you all for asking those questions um thank you thank you for the opportunity cool well thank you tom for leading us through this yeah another you, one bites the dust yeah <laughs> <laughs> another year another year down <laughs> We will meet again next year. Thank you, Doreen, for getting the minutes out to us so fast. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And yes, yes. All the stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Doreen, for wrangling us in general. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <Lots of> <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> Marine does not get enough credit for all the things she does for this commission. So <laughs> thanks, Tom. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Okay. Happy holidays, there, everyone. Yeah, happy holidays. Take appreciate care. I'll be sending you um, an updated uh, calendar and invitations to the meeting. So be looking for that. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Bye.